Hi, your video today is on patterns and linear functions, and by the end you will be able to identify and represent the linear function patterns. Vocabulary that you need to know um, before we get started on this topic. Um, in a relationship between variables, in other words, a function, the dependent variable changes in response to the other variable, which is the independent variable. Um, so in other words, the independent variable stands all by itself. The dependent variable changes because it relies on what is happening for the independent variable. Um, an example for that, um, the number of tiles on the floor depends on the size of the room. So because it depends on the size of the room, the size of the room is our independent variable and then the tiles, the number of tiles would be our dependent variable. Linear functions for you. Here's an example um, in photography. The table shown to the right um, is the relationship between the number of photos you take and the amount of memory in megabytes left on your camera's memory chip. Um, is the relationship a linear function? and then describe the relationship using words. Uh, so before we answer whether this relationship is linear or not, we need to identify the independent and dependent variables. Um, in this example, the dependent variable, I shouldn't say in this example, the dependent variable is always your y, and the independent variable is always your x. Uh, and so the dependent variable in this case, what's going to change? The amount of memory you have is going to change. Um, and the independent variable is your number of photos. It doesn't matter how many photos you have, it's the memory that is going to change. All right. Um, different ways to represent a function here. Um, this chart is going to look very familiar to you. Um, let's take a look at our table first. We've already talked about um, our independent variable being the photos and the dependent variable being the memory. Um, but we need to find a pattern here. Um, if we look at our graph, we notice each time it increases by one here, these are increasing or decreasing, I should say, not increasing, they're decreasing by three every time, okay? Um, because that is a constant change, then you will um, say that it is a um, linear function. Um, there are other ways you can tell whether it's a linear function or not, and we'll go about that in just a second. All right, um, the graph of this can be very easily done. Now, it's hard for me to do it on here and be um, very precise, uh, just because the screen is small and I, I'm trying my best, but yours should look better than mine. Um, here is my number of photos. Um, one two, three, four, and that's our photos. Make sure you label. And then depend, or sorry, independent variable is your memory. Okay, and at zero, it's already at 500. And so we're gonna start, um, this would be zero. We're gonna start and go up by, we're gonna put a break in this. Um, which means we're not really measuring it too well and up until 500. After 500, let's increase um, by fives. Okay. Um, again, your graph is going to look way better than mine. Um, all right, now I plot. So these first ones are my coordinate points. So zero... 512, going to be about there. Then 1, 509, approximately there. 2, 506, 
and 3503. Okay, um, then I can connect these points and draw a little arrow. It is a line that would continue on. Um, because this is a straight line, the graph has no curves, that is another definition, um, another way that you can see that it is a linear function. Um, so this example is a linear function because um, of the pattern that's here and because of the straight line in our graph. All right, let's go up to our equation. Um, our equation here is how are we going to um, get um, this information written in an equation? Okay, this one is a little bit trickier. We're always going to start with y equals because we want to be able to figure out our dependent variable based on our independent variable. Um, and I notice here, if I start, if I have zero photos, I'm still going to have 512 um, pieces of memory left. So I'm going to write 512. And then I know that it's decreasing by 3 every time based on the number of photos. Um, so I'm going to subtract 3x. Um, and I can check this very simply because... Um, if I, here's an example for you, so if I said, um, let's do 2, okay, x is 2, so I'm going to say y equals 512 minus 3 times 2, that would be y equals 512 minus 6, and if I subtract 6, that will give me 506, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, so I know that I have my equation set up correctly. Um, a hint for you is that um, anytime you have 0 and a, a number other than 0, that you're going to be either adding or subtracting onto um, the, it's like extra. You're adding it on. It's a constant. Um, that gets added on to your variable or subtracted. Um, and then in words, uh, this is how you would say this. When x is 0, y is, oops, y is, 512, and I'm just going off of my table, then as x increases by 1, because that's what it's doing, y decreases by 3. All right, now we have um, shown how to represent a function in four different ways, um, which is really exciting. We will do some more practice with this in class as well, um, but these are the ways that you need to know um, and be able to translate. Um, because of our table, we've talked about this, but I'm just going to say this again because it's important. Um, because we are increasing constantly here or decreasing, increasing constantly here, decreasing here, and because we have a straight line here, we are able to write a linear equation. Um, in other words, we have a linear function. In other words, linear functions have one independent and one dependent value, and linear functions make a straight, non-vertical line. And that's all, folks. Thanks for watching.